usually willing to lend a hand, and you never met a person you didn't like. Well, there's a con artist out there who'd like to meet you. We all like to think we're too sophisticated to be scammed, but it happens all the time. Every day, smart, even naturally suspicious people are swindled. Tonight, we're going to prove it to you, and you'll learn how best to protect yourself from an expert, a former con artist giving us his first ever interview. Here again is Chief Consumer Correspondent Lee Thompson with tonight's Dateline hidden camera investigation. Excuse me, sir. Detective Searles, could you please step to the side, please? From the safe distance of the silver screen, like in the movie The Sting, all of us have chuckled at the scam victim's misfortune. She picked him clean. He never missed him. We have also admired the confidence man's cunning. But when you leave Hollywood for anywhere USA, the thieves become anything but funny. These con men are shrewd, devious, skillful. John Groh heads up the National Association of Bunko Investigators, a group of cops dedicated to catching confidence crime crooks. These guys are only limited by their imagination. Who are these people lurking on the periphery of society, waiting for the chance to bilk you out of your hard-earned money? That was the best. This former con artist was so good, he got the FBI's attention. He's been convicted of fraud three times and was released from federal prison last year. Now he's changed his name to Brett Champion, and he says he's come clean. He claims he had a scam for just about everyone. Office supply scam, contest scam, advertising scams, advance fee loan scams. Most people watching this are going to say, I would never be so stupid as to fall for these things. And all of those people who are saying that better look back on their lives, because at one time or another, somewhere, somehow, they were conned. What is it about us, all of us, that makes us fall for this stuff? because we're all dreamers, and we all want to get that something for nothing. And con men play on that fact that we all are dreamers. We deliver that dream to you, guaranteed. The most common incentive is money, but not always. Sometimes it's just the opportunity to be part of something big. Someone comes in and just totally takes over, takes control. And they're just left in a whirlwind. I've had so many described, they thought they were mesmerized. It, when it's all over with, their head's spinning. Excuse me, sir. We decided, with the help of the experts, to try a classic swindle. Sandra Searles Bank Examiner's Unit. Can you it's been around for decades. It's called the Bank Examiner Detective Scam. Searles Bank Examiner's Unit, local police. Uh -huh. uh, you haven't done anything wrong. Don't uh -huh. be alarmed. <laughs> she may look like a bank examiner, sound like a bank examiner. But that's really Dateline producer Sandra Searles. Um, we're actually operating surveillance today to try to catch a counterfeiting ring. I don't know if you've heard about the counterfeiting ring, but we now have reason. That's the setup. She tells him a bank employee may be a criminal, part of a counterfeiting scheme. Uh, but we now have good reason to believe, actually, that one of the tellers in this bank is actually helping pass bad bills to innocent customers. Do you, and are you now the sting. The woman he thinks is a cop says she needs his assistance. Well, we think we've got our crook in the bank, and we've actually have gathered a lot of evidence today and are almost close enough to make an arrest. What I'd like you to ask you to do is give me a little help here. Okay. What we need to do is get just a couple of more bills back to the lab. So if you could withdraw five $20 bills, that's $100. Okay. Then we will immediately transfer electronically the money back to your account. So he goes into the bank withdraws money from his company's account, and willingly hands over $100. There you go. Great. Count it out so I can see it. You got five 20s there. Was everything normal inside? Yeah, everything's fine. Okay. But what happens when we tell this man she's not really a bank examiner? Have you ever heard of the bank examiner scam? Just as a scam here? This is what could have been a scam. This is Sandra Searles, who's a producer with NBC. Hi. My goodness. I'm sorry. You're tricking me. <laughs> well, the psychology behind that is they want to be liked. They want to be noticed, and they want to help other people and be a hero. This is one of the most common kinds of motives that are tapped by the confidence windows. Dr. And Monroe Friedman is one of the few psychologists who's studied and written about confidence crime. He says there is a science to the scammer's strategy. 
They have a way of starting you at point one and just very gradually moving you step by step into a situation in which something that would have seemed ridiculous on the face of it suddenly seems somewhat palatable. The con artist does this in part by exuding confidence. The idea is to gain the Marks confidence. That's why they're called Give con me, sir. games. Detective Searles, bank examiner's office, could you step to the side here, please? You have to think in your mind, I'm going to get that money. I know I can do it. Scammers have to add to the confidence a healthy dose of charm because people trust those they like. Really nice of you to help out. I know it's a little odd. No, yeah. Not. Can I you see You have the to money? be very, very likable because you're really selling yourself. Okay. Our Dateline producer, Sandra Searles, smiled. She made eye contact. She touched, befriended. What was it about Sandra that made you trust her? The way she looked at me, the way she was talking to me, and I don't know, I just trust her. No, I don't know why, but I did. But not every Mark is so trusting. And former con man Brett Champion says, that's something for which con men have to be prepared. Yep. Every single question, every single thing that comes up, you have to have an answer, and it has to be a good answer, and it has to be a quick answer. Brett Champion's advice paid off when we faced this tough customer. Everything will be kosher, okay? All right, so I'm going to have everything. I'm going to have your badge number. I'm going to have everything. Absolutely. For my protection. That's right, and that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. You'll have my badge number. I'll have give you my card. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you, ma'am. We'll be right here. Okay. Good luck. This is the riskiest part of the con game, because when the mark leaves the scene, she might confer with others. So Sandra tells her, don't talk to anyone. Now, there's one other thing I just need to make sure that you understand. The people inside the bank, for obvious reasons, don't know that we're here. So when you go in, you just need to act normally. Okay, it looks like we got a hit. Stand by. She fell for it. You have just been conned by one of the oldest games in the book. Sandra was acting. Oh, you're kidding me. I, I am truly amazed that I did this. As was you know, everyone else involved in our demonstration. In fact, no one wanted to admit to us or themselves they did it. Did you know that you just got conned by one of the oldest games in the book? Is that, I was, I was, what, there? Right there. We picked five people in their bank parking lots for our con game demonstration. While we never actually took anyone's money, every person we pursued withdrew the hundred dollars and eventually admitted they were ready to hand it over. I'd have been out bucks. You've been out a hundred bucks and she'd be out of town. Right? Could we have asked for and gotten a thousand dollars, five thousand dollars? Who knows? But experts say rarely is someone able to pull themselves out of an ongoing scam. And too often, they cannot overcome their embarrassment enough to turn a con man in. And I believe if we all listen to that little voice inside us, we won't be taken advantage of. And that voice is common sense. But this self-proclaimed reformed confidence man also says no one is con proof. If you do get taken, forget the self-blame. And what I'd like to do is tell all of those victims, you made a mistake, you're only human. But call the police, pick up the phone, get that person thrown in jail before they hurt somebody else. The National Association of Bunko Investigators says that since 1991, there have been nearly 200 reports of people being taken in by the so-called bank examiner scam. And the average loss was not $100, as in our little experiment, but nearly $11,000. And it's estimated that most incidents of this particular scam, up to 90% of them, go unreported.